Okay, in this video, we'll see uh, how do we implement different uh, digital uh, Boolean expressions using different logics. So, let us start with implementing uh, an AND gate uh, using uh, different uh, <coughs> configurations. So, let us start with uh, static CMOS implementation. So, as we uh, know very well, okay, how to implement an AND gate using static. Uh, CMOS, uh, of course, in static CMOS, we don't have both uh, N and PMOS transistors. So, this is uh, okay. Input A, B. Okay, let me just put here. And then, this is the PMOS. This is A, B. And we have this as VTD. And this is the ground R, the VSS. And this is Y is equal to A. <coughs> the whole bar. So this is uh, the implementation of NAND gate using static CMOS. Uh, we can also implement this using pass transistor. So as we discussed in, in the previous classes, so this is pass transistor. So as we know that uh, uh, the truth table of NAND gate, which is y is equal to a b whole bar, let me write a b and y. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, these are the possible inputs. This is the output what you have. And uh, now let us uh, try to draw the pass transistor logic. So let me consider um, A as the logic which need to be implemented uh, as the gate control. So let me have with a is equal to 1 when a is equal to 1 if you can see here suppose if you compare what is the output you can see uh, the output is uh, the complement of b so let me write it as b bar so this is my y so when a is equal to 0 when a is equal to 0 so let me just drive this using an inverter now this is now when a is equal to 0 this is off whereas this will be on so what is the corresponding uh, when a is equal to 0 if you can see the output output is always 1 so let me make it VDD. so this is one so this is how we can implement uh, the NAND gate this is the implementation of NAND gate using static CMOS implementation of same NAND gate using the pass transistor so first you want to implement uh, the same thing using the transmission gates so it is very simple so you can just retain the same logic over there so this is how it will become this is the transmission gate let me just make this as okay this is okay this is a here and of course uh, this is driven by its complement so done so as per this this is b bar i'm just trying to implement same nand gate using transmission gates and this is my final output this is y this is a so let me try this using the complement of this over here and of course uh, these two are driven complementary Okay, now this is fine. So as per this, this is equal to VD. So here the issue with the pass transistor is that if you are using NMOS transistor, you won't have a weak uh, one. Here it is strong zero, strong zero. Whereas in case of a transmission gate, so it is uh, both both are strong one and zero. So, because strong one is, uh, you'll be getting a strong one using because of PMOS, and you get strong zero because of uh, the NMOS pass transistor. Because now it's a combination of both N and PMOS transistor, which will make the transmission gate. So, let us see uh, if you can see here the number of gates that are required in case of static CMOS is you can see you need to have uh, the number of inputs. Uh, the number of transistors should be always equal to n into the number of uh, uh, inputs because it's a two input NAND gate since it's a two input NAND gate here so it is uh, two 
need to do so if it's a three input uh, nand gate then it will become okay now it will become six so number of inputs this, this happens to be the number of inputs if the number of inputs are two then it is four number of four gates if the number of inputs are three then it will become so three into two is actually six transistors so if the number of uh, inputs for that gate increases the count of transistor the overall count of transistor will also be keep increasing so let us see uh, one more way of implementing the NAND gate so this is a, a special case where you can implement using sudo this is sudo nmos transistor in this sudo nmos transistor the pull down network exactly remains same as that of your uh, static uh, CMOS uh, implementation that is this is your pull down network this exactly remains the same so you want to have this as A and B but the pull up network will be given by an, uh, a PMOS transistor which is always on so which is always on you can see now this is VDD so this is your Y output so Y is still equal to A into B so assume that uh, AB is equal to 0 0 if it is 0 0 you'll get it as 1 because uh, this will become 1 because the charge is getting through this if, if both of them are becoming 1 1 so if A and B is equal to 1 1 you can see both the transistors are on whatever the charge that is stored in this capacitor that is a uh, load capacitor we get discharged so the combination of uh, a b y that is 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 if it is 0 0 then since it is on the entire energy is stored in this capacitor output is 1 if uh, both the transistor off or even if one of the transistors is off this will be equal to 1 that's what is the case if both are 1 then this becomes 0 if both are 1 then whatever the charge that is stored in this capacitor will be get discharged to this this is how the logic works uh, for this particular uh, pseudo NMOS transistor for an NAND gate. Here there is a uh, catch in, in this particular implementation. So assume that assume that the W by L of uh, P transistor is far far greater than W by L of N transistors. It is far far greater than. In such case, since the value of uh, W by L ratio of this transistor is far greater than this, so we can assume that R pull up so r up so let me say it as r r pull up will be far far less compared to r pull down even though all the transistors are on of course this transistor is always on because this is always connected to ground so this will make sure that this is always on for this particular combination for this particular combination of one one so you are trying to make this also on this also on they will also have a resistance rpd rpd if this resistance rpu that is pull up resistance is very less what happens is uh, what we expected was so whenever it was uh, 1 1 we are supposed to get a zero output voltage but the issue is since we are assuming the dimension of this transistor to be very large compared to these two dimensions which will ensure very less resistance for this particular transistor uh, this transistor will be offering very less resistance in such case even though we have a condition of a and b becoming one since this is also one uh, what will happen is you'll want to have a capacitor which was supposed to discharge to zero since this resistance is less this is not allowing it to discharge so it is keep on charging this uh, output capacitor even though this is there since the resistance offered by these two transistor is more compared to this so what will happen is this output which was supposed to become zero which was supposed to become zero is not becoming zero so th this output is not becoming zero because this is always filling the charges to this capacitor so this is an issue this is a major issue in case of a pseudo NMOS transistor so why this is happening is because you are making the dimension of this transistor very large compared to this so that the resistance is less over here so now you can see the output which was supposed to become zero is not becoming zero it is becoming actually it is remaining at one so this value of output voltage which is now depends on the dimension of the transistor can you see now suppose if the dimension of w by l of p is uh, less compared to W by L of N that is 
if the resistance offered by this is uh, greater compared to this one uh, can you see in such condition in such condition uh, whenever this condition comes whenever this is becoming 1 1 since the resistance offered by these two transistors are less will it not discharge quickly even though this is on since the resistance offered by this transistor is high this won't charge quickly or uh, the earlier condition where this was still becoming 1 will not be there because this is charging slowly whereas this is discharging quickly so the output voltage not only depends on the value of a and b the output is now depending on the dimension of this pseudo that is p mos transistor such type of logic where output not only depends on the input combination if it depends on the dimension of this assume that if the dimension of this is uh, very large you are getting a mal practice that is so not not mal practice you are not getting a proper value if the dimension of this is small you are getting a proper value so you can see now the output is not driven only by the ab combination but it is driven by the dimension of transistor which is there in the pull up network such type of logics where the output not only depends on input it also depends on the value of uh, this dimension it is called as ratioed logic it is called as uh, ratioed logic so this ratioed logic indicates that the output depends on what is the w by l ratio of this transistor if the w by l ratio of this transistor is less you will get it properly if the w by l ratio of this particular transistor is large enough then you have an issue then you have an issue so we will see uh, one more logic in the next video